If it's makeup on the go, she's the girl you need to know. Tell your friends, tune on in to the next of Kim show. Could be fashion on a budget, it don't matter, she be on it. She's a gem of all trades. Next of Kim is so fake. Girl, you know she did my nail? Yeah, she killing in the game. Just the other day, she did her hair, and baby, it was late. So without What's up YouTube? It's your girl Kim on the cam and I am back with another video for the channel. Let's get into it. First things first, if you are new here, welcome. Make sure that you subscribe to the Knock Nation. Come join the Next to Kim Nation, join the family, and turn on your post notifications so that you're gonna know the next time I upload because I am going to be dropping bangers. Make sure you guys are following me on all of my social media. I'm gonna put it somewhere at the bottom of this screen, but it will also be in the description box below. If you follow me on Snapchat, then you know I used to do cooking with Kim little series and posts on my story literally all the time. I'm not gonna, you know, hype myself up too much, but I have heard that I am a top chef. <laughs> Don't put me in the kitchen with Gordon Ramsay, nothing like that, but I have heard from plenty of people that have tasted my cooking that I'm a decent cook. So guys, if you could not tell from the title of this video, today I am going to be starting Hopefully what may be the start of a new series called Cooking with Kim and this is the first official video to you guys. A lot of my friends and family of course have eaten food that I've made and I've heard very good feedback. I grew up in a Jamaican household so just from being in the kitchen as a child I've learned many things over time like as I got older I just started experimenting with different things. And I could say I could pretty much make anything. If I um, don't know how to make something, I would definitely just like look up a recipe and follow it. And it always turns out good. Today we are going to be making some garlic butter baked salmon with a little bit of lemon and some fettuccine alfredo on the side. I'm probably going to make some garlic bread as well. And then I do have some salad, you know, because you got to have some sort of vegetables in there. I am going to show you guys how I season my salmon. We're going to bake that in the oven. And then, of course, our alfredo sauce has to be made from scratch, okay? We don't use, we do not use no can Alfredo sauce or Alfredo sauce that comes in a jar, okay? We don't use that. We make it from scratch. That's what I be doing. So I'm going to show you guys how I make Alfredo sauce. I'll be real transparent. This is not the cutest kitchen in the world. I live in a very Jamaican household, so everything in the house looks, if you know, you know. I don't know how to explain that, but if you're Jamaican, you know sometimes what the house be looking like. I would never have drapes like this. It really don't matter what the kitchen look like as long as it's clean and as long as the food that comes out of it is good. Uh -oh, let's get started. Once again, make sure that you like this video right now if you have not. Subscribe to the channel because we will be dropping bangers. Just like how that bottle dropped in the background. Alright you guys, so first things first, I want to show you what I have set up right here. Which is this pot which I'm going to be boiling the water for our pasta in. And then as you can see, I have three individual portions of frozen salmon that was defrosting in this water over here. And I'm going to show you guys the bag. I get this salmon from Costco. It comes just like this. And I think you get maybe like eight, eight to ten max pieces of this salmon and it comes frozen and the reason that I love these is because it's easier when I'm cooking for just myself. I don't usually make a lot of food when I cook. I cook for the day so this is a great option if you want to have salmon that's pre-frozen and also pre-portioned. So I'm going to be cooking those three pieces but they've been defrosting in the water. So I'm going to get some water in this pan and put it to boil so that I can start the pasta and then I will season the salmon. Alright you guys, so I've got the water now boiling and don't forget of course salt your water. So we're just going to sprinkle some salt in here. Now what I will definitely say to you guys is that I'm not somebody that really uses accurate measurements when I cook. I kind of just do everything by eye, but I guess I'll try to give the best estimate that I can when it comes to seasoning the salmon. So we'll see in a second how that goes. By the way, does anybody else's Caribbean parents do this? If you guys don't notice, there is foil covering the top of my stove. And my mom does this because supposedly it makes cleaning it a lot easier. You kind of just get to pick up the foil, roll it up and throw it away. And then you only have to do a little bit of cleaning of wiping down the actual stove itself. So if anybody's wondering why my stove looks like that, I don't know if it's a Caribbean thing, but it's something that my mom for sure definitely does. 
So we're gonna leave this water on here and when it's boiling, then we'll come back and add in the fettuccine pasta. All right, y'all, so these are the ingredients that we're gonna be using to season the salmon. Of course, we have some minced garlic right over here. This is, I can't believe it's not butter, which is actually vegetable oil spread, but that's going to be in place of our real butter. We have one whole lemon right here, and then let's get into the seasoning. So you have some black pepper, salt, Dobo, you need, you need Old Bay, okay? Almost anything seafoody or at least fish. This can also go on chicken and stuff like that, but when it comes to salmon especially or any other seafood, you need Old Bay. It's like a staple, you can't do it without Old Bay. Lastly, I've just got some onion powder, some garlic powder even though we do have fresh garlic. I have some dill weed. This is something that my mom has definitely always used, so I don't know if a lot of people know about this but I put dill weed on top of my salmon. It just helps to really add to the flavor. Some paprika, just some parsley. So those are the things that we're gonna be using. I'm gonna line this baking pan with some foil so that it's easy to clean up and then we're gonna get right into it. I would recommend that you preheat your oven to like 350 degrees. Salmon is not something that takes super long to cook so it won't be in there for too long. So you got that set up like that. Any bit of vegetable oil and just pour it on there just so that it doesn't stick. So next we are gonna go in, we have our salmon right here. So once you have your salmon set up like that, we're gonna start off with a little bit of the garlic. And we're just gonna take this and the fork. I could even use this knife, so. We're just gonna take this knife and just knock out a few pieces of garlic on top of the salmon. Let's start with some more garlic powder. I would honestly say you just need a light sprinkle of each thing. Because we have a lot of seasonings, you don't need to put a lot of flavor into this. You definitely don't want to put a lot of salt, but you just want to put a sprinkle of everything. This is the onion powder. Just to give it a nice flavor. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I'm YouTube, I'm so. <laughs> yeah. When it comes yeah. out, I'll, I'll send it to you so you can watch it. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna put a little bit of parsley on now, but a lot of times people people usually just put this as a garnish on top to make it look cute. But parsley obviously does have a flavor. So a couple of sprinkles of parsley over each one also will not hurt. You can maybe take a teaspoon or maybe half a teaspoon, it depends on whatever your preference is, but just a little pad of butter like that. And you're just gonna put that on top of each piece. As soon as the oven is preheated, we're gonna stick these in at 350. Probably for, I would say, maybe 20 minutes. I would check it around 20 minutes, and if it's not done, then it shouldn't be anything more than 30. Let's get started on the pasta, okay? All right, you guys, as you can see, I've got the water boiling now, and we are going to use this Good and Gather. This is Target's brand of pasta, so I decided to try it. You know, can't go wrong. Everything from Target slaps. So we're gonna use this fettuccine today. I'm gonna do maybe three fourths of this box.
All right, you guys, so that is the timer for the salmon. So let's check on that and see how that's doing. And hopefully this pasta should be done in maybe another five minutes. All right, you guys, so this is how the salmon is looking. It is just about done. So what I'm gonna do now is just squeeze some fresh lemon juice over these and I'll probably stick it back in for maybe another five minutes. And then these will be ready to go. Let's do that right now. So now that our pasta is done, we are going to strain this. In the sink, just like so. They say that a trick to help your pasta not to stick together is to immediately run cold water over it. I don't know how true that is, but I'm gonna do it just in case. This is the type of stuff that I mean by sometimes I randomly try a thing. Now that that is there draining and the salmon is almost now done, I have some frozen garlic bread that I'm just going to throw in the oven and then we are going to get started on our sauce. All right, you guys, so this is how the salmon came out. Perfectly cooked, not burnt. I know the, the sauces and the juices on the boiler burn, but as you can see, those salmon pieces are perfectly browned. So we are going to start on the sauce right now for the pasta. And we're basically done, y'all. Once the garlic bread comes out of the oven and we got that sauce on, we're just gonna toss the pasta in the sauce and then we will be doing our plating because throwing together a salad from a bag literally takes five minutes. So let's get into the sauce right now. For the sauce, this is a very simple recipe. I have actually made this recipe two different ways before, but this is the shorter version. Normally, I like to make this the old fashioned way, which is making a roux. If y'all don't know what that is, basically you're gonna take butter and flour, mix it together, and it goes through like three different stages before it gets to what it's supposed to be. But instead of using a roux, I'm gonna be using heavy cream today, but this is still technically going to be a recipe from scratch. First, let's turn the fire on high, just to get the pan nice and hot. And we're gonna start by putting around two tablespoons of butter. So this is a tablespoon size, so put around two tablespoons of butter into your pot right now. And one, two, and while that is melting, we are also. I dropped the spoon. Add once again some fresh garlic to this. That should be good. So we've got the fresh garlic and the butter in there, and you're gonna see that that is going to start melting down. I'm now gonna turn the fire down to like medium so it doesn't burn. Here we go. So next up, we are going to add our two basic seasonings for this, which is black pepper. I hope you guys can see. Let me see, maybe I could. A little bit over more. Okay, how's that? I think that should be good. So yes, yeah, so you have the fire on medium, and so we've added some black pepper, and then we are gonna go in with some salt. Try not to be too heavy-handed with this, you guys. Because the cheese also has salt in it, and Parmesan cheese is a very robust cheese, so it already has a lot of flavor. Next up, we are going to take a half a pint of this heavy whipping cream and we are going to pour in the whole thing. And as soon as you pour that in, you wanna start stirring with your whisk. Starts to boil or bubble again, we are going to start to add in our cheese. So now we are going to add in some mozzarella cheese. Parmesan cheese, this is already pre-grated. This is 
is it. It's just getting nice and thick. You can turn the fire down to low now, if anything, and really just give it a few more moments to really thicken up. But you have this beautiful, rich Alfredo sauce. So sauce is nice and thickened. I'm going to come back to when I'm going to add in the pasta. I like to use tongs for this process because it's just so much easier to toss the pasta once it's in there. Sometimes a spoon just really doesn't help you out. So just use some tongs, get that all in there. Once that's nice and mixed like that, you're pretty much set. I'm just gonna check on the garlic bread just to make sure that that's done. Look at that garlic bread, y'all. It is baked to perfection, okay? I love my garlic bread. It gotta be a little crispy, but I still like it to have a little bit of softness when I bite it. Can't be too crunchy, okay? So this is perfect. Oh, oh.